beginning of the end, uh, we had the failure of these two Bear Stearns hedge funds, had an effect on Lehman stock price. Uh, the firm began firing people in the mortgage-related area. Why didn't I realize what was going on and, and the full implications of this? I, you know, I was as blind as anyone else, so don't give me too much credit for being uh, perspicacious here. Uh, they shut down some of the uh, mortgage operations. The housing market correction still gained momentum. Didn't stop Lehman from continuing uh, in this market, underwriting more mortgage-backed securities than other, any other firm. 85 billion portfolio, four times the shareholders' equity of assets that were largely toxic and would not be good for anything. Uh, and then in fourth quarter, we had a bit of a rebound. Uh, global equity markets reached new highs. There was a temporary recovery. And the firm really should have used that opportunity to trim its uh, asset exposures a bit. That would have turned out to be its last chance. They did not take that opportunity. So hurtling towards failure, we're heading towards the abyss now, towards the precipice. Their leverage was enormous. Uh, total assets to shareholders' equity, 31 times. What is Goldman's leveraged now at the end of 2013? It's about 12 times. So these guys, I mean, other banks were in the same boat, but they were setting a precedent here. They were well out on the limb. Uh, a huge portfolio of mortgage securities, making, making them very vulnerable to uh, the deteriorating market conditions. Um, following the near collapse of Bear Stearns, which eventually was bailed out, they were a big underwriter of mortgage-backed as well. Lehman shares fell, lost half their value. There was a little bit of return to confidence in April. Uh, they managed to raise $4 billion through uh, a preferred stock issue, convertible into shares at a 32% premium. Well, that price was never realized again. Yeah, silly. Well, uh, there were more and more misgivings uh, creeping in, but again, the internal propaganda was so strong that I didn't fully, and I'm, I was supposed to be a credit analyst here, right? But I didn't recognize it as fully as, as I should have. The rating agencies didn't. Uh, we were listening too much to uh, the leadership propaganda. Meanwhile, these are guys, the chief operating officer used to take at the helicopter every morning from his estate in Long Island to Manhattan. These guys were virtually in a contest as to see who could spend the most money in the course of a month. Uh, oh yeah, I, I spent two million this month. And it was just <laughs> totally incredible. However, it was only a month later that I left in May uh, when it became all too apparent. I had really had enough of investment banking by that point. I tried to sell as many shares as I could to uh, get out and get back to my first love, which is teaching kids like you and, uh, and research. So, um, yeah, I, sh I should have done it sooner, I agree with you, maybe back in February 2007 at 86 bucks, bucks a share. Um, but after this, uh, it was only temporary, the stock resumed its decline, hedge fund managers were getting into all kinds of arguments with Aaron about the valuation of this portfolio. It was too little too late. On June 9th, a second quarter loss of nearly $3 billion, its first loss since the spin-off from Amex. Uh, but they reported they had raised another $6 billion and had boosted their liquidity, reducing exposure and cutting leverage down a bit. But again, not enough. Uh, so over the summer, management were running around frantically trying to find partners to uh, team up with. Uh, stock price continued to plummet. Um, there was a lot of questioning of Dick's plan to keep the firm independent. Uh, there was a former Lehman banker, a Korean guy, E.S. Min, who headed the Seoul office, who went to work for Korea Development Bank, and somehow he managed to convince them that this would be a good acquisition for them. And so they did enter into talks for a while, which ended uh, the South Korean bank put those <coughs> talks on hold, and that was really the last, the final nail in the coffin. The last hope virtually was gone. A death blow, uh, another 50% plunge in the stock price, the uh, two-thirds spike in the CDS, credit default swaps, which is a measure of credit risk uh, in instruments that are traded, and the hedge fund clients uh, began pulling out as well. And so if you alienate those guys who are virtual sharks, right, you know you're dead. Uh, Short-term creditors were cutting credit lines, and the third quarter pre-announcement was dismal emphasizing how fragile the financial position was. What I call the loss weekend before September 14th, huge loss, write down, uh, 
uh, strategic restructuring, Moody's threatening a downgrade, but they still had it like at A minus, you know, which was way too high. Um, they only had a billion left in cash. Last ditch efforts of the weekend to try and convince other banks to take over, which were unsuccessful until Monday, September 15th, the declaration of bankruptcy, and you had all these poor Lehman employees at Canary Wharf carrying their cardboard boxes out of the office saying, sorry, it's finished, you know, try and find something else. Now, fortunately for them, a lot of them found new jobs with Nomura, who uh, picked up most of the staff in Asia and Europe. Barclays got the U.S. staff, uh, so many of my former colleagues are working there. Could the U.S. government have stepped in? Well, we examined the arguments there. Uh, they thought they'd reached the limit of taxpayer funds they could utilize to prop up investment banks. And as an investment bank employee, I, I would never have thought the government should step in to try and save us anyway. We're not that uh, systemic to the population. Um, only in retrospect, maybe we feel differently. Uh, if he had allowed uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac to fail, it would have had much larger implications. Uh, however, Bear Stearns had uh, been bailed out earlier. Lehman was arguably bigger. Barclays was interested. It wanted to pick up those assets cheaply, uh, similar to the proposed deal for Northern Rock uh, and Lloyd's offer. But the FSA said, told Barclays, it's probably not a good idea to buy a U.S. investment bank right now.